All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I thought I'd update you guys on how the fig season is going so far. It's actually June 13th. By the time this video came out, we're probably past Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Uh, and we're here growing fig trees in the Philadelphia area, Zone 7A. And I have to say that the fig trees look fantastic. I don't know if they look necessarily better or worse than prior years. The, the weather has been beautiful here. Upcoming, actually, uh, today I think is almost at the, in, in the 90s of Fahrenheit. Tomorrow is going to be 90-something. And then next week, every day is going to be, be between 90 to 96. So the fig trees are really going to love this. They're going to grow. I wish I actually had fruit ripening right now. This would be the absolute perfect dry, hot weather to ripen fig trees in. Uh, but unfortunately, all these figs here, and I wanted to zoom out for you guys. The camera's pretty far away from this plot on the west side of the property. This is one of two plots I have on the west side. Uh, this is definitely the most advanced plot, and I wanted to zoom out just so you could see the scope of how big some of these trees are. Uh, now, size is, doesn't mean everything. Um, I know a lot of people have large trees, and some of the larger trees I have, I've showed you guys, believe it or not, are really not all that productive considering the height of them. It's not necessarily the height, it's also how dense they are and how many fruiting branches you have and how many leaves you have within these trees that are actually fruiting. Um, and every tree has a different habit, different way of pruning them and managing them that I've talked about. This Brianzolo Rosso is much taller than it probably should be. The same thing with this Nerino uh, right here. But regardless, you know, these trees are quite large and they, in general, the trees are really coming into their own. We're, we now have trees that have survived the winter here. Like I said, we're in zone 7A where we can definitely struggle with the winter temperatures. Um, these trees are now entering their fourth and some of them, I think there's very few entering their fifth season, um, getting through the winter periods now of lots of cold. Uh, it's been actually rather mild, I should say, but certainly um, they're now surviving the winter. They're really coming into their own and they're becoming quite mature trees. Uh, and this is nice because I, I have not really had much of this in the past with all the things that we've tried here on this channel, all the experiments, all the things I try to do wrong on purpose, just in order to learn something new or all the weird styles of pruning and and uh, it's just, I was recently making a video about my high dense planting that I had done here. I mean, these trees are two foot on center and there's about 40 trees, 35 to 40 trees just in this one plot. And it just brought back some memories of all the crazy things and um, you know, interesting things I tried just so I could learn a little bit about fig trees. And it did pay it off. I mean, doing something in an unorthodox way doing something that you would think of as wrong, it made me understand, well, why was that wrong? Or maybe there was some actual right in it. And I think it's, um, it's just to me now, it's really great to see that some of these trees are really going to produce a ton of fruit. And I, I actually do wish though, I did set aside a couple trees that I could have done right from the very beginning and just left those alone. <laughs> that would have been, that would have probably been smart. Um, there's a few things I definitely regret. Uh, maybe that's a, another video for a different time, but I'll show you a, you know, a tree like this Ronde Bordeaux here. I, I point it out all the time, but you know, this tree is probably the prime example because it's off on its own. It's not planted in this super high density area and it really has more space than other trees. Uh, but this one here is gonna produce, I, I think easily 400 figs. Um, I would be shocked if I'm not close to 500, actually. We, we did a lot of the, the pinching that I've mentioned. The, the figs have actually formed. Um, and then, of course, what's really cool that's happening is the new branching is already starting to develop. And once that new branching, that new flush of growth happens, this tree is just going to be like a producing, producing machine. Uh, a fig producing machine. So, you know, I, 
I think this tree is obviously very, very productive for many reasons I've talked about in the past. Not every tree is gonna produce this many, um, but certainly I would argue that a tree like this Noreno has the potential to produce close to 300 as well, or maybe in the 300s. The same thing with this um, Green Michurinska is probably similar to that Ronde Bordeaux, maybe in the 400s, uh, somewhere in that range. It's nice that I also have, you know, these amazing Brebas that will also ripen here probably very soon uh, coming up. Uh, but generally, a lot of these varieties here are going to start August 1st here in the Philadelphia area. And this is, of course, without a head start. You know, there's no greenhouse I threw over these trees. Uh, the majority of them are going to start right around that first or second week of August. Now, it would be cool. We'll see if something can actually produce earlier than that in, let's say, July. That would be great. It'd be a nice um, little bonus, and maybe that could be the trend going forward. But I think the weather has been pretty average, and so I would not expect that to be the case. But still, I mean, we're not that far away from August 1st or around that date. We're also not that far away from some Breva. So I really am liking what I'm seeing, and there's going to be more figs in here than I can eat. And uh, maybe this is the year I actually start selling some of them. Um, but I think a lot of jam is in my future. I think a lot of sharing again is in my future this year uh, as we did a lot of sharing last year with the tasting that we did. Who knows? We'll see what, what, I, what I end up doing, but maybe I'll freeze some and add them to smoothies or whatever. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But regardless, um, yeah, it's just a good feeling to know that you're at least doing something right. And um, obviously, um, you know, I think you guys are hopefully benefiting from all the information that I've put out there as well. And it's, it's, um, the other cool thing I really want to mention is it's, it's not just, you know, the, the standard varieties that have been producing for years. There's varieties in here that I have rarely seen much fruit from in the past. Like, like this Sultane is now getting established here close to the, the sunroom, that's gonna produce a lot of fruit, even producing some Breba. There's a, um, you know, a, a Smith back in here that's entering its, uh, I think it's fourth or fifth season of surviving the winter. And even that is covered in fruit on basically every node. And I had, I had really thought in the past that a lot of this production was purely based on sunlight. I put a lot of emphasis on sunlight. It is not, it's not the sunlight. In fact, I made that video, I don't know, about a month ago at this point about how much sunlight figs actually need. And I said four hours is a good amount. I think you could go even lower. And I'm telling you, I have a tree back in here, gorgeous soak grease, you can, barely see it it's barely getting any light direct sunlight but there's a sucker <laughs> all the way down there at the base you guys can't you don't even know which one it is but it's so low to the ground that it's getting no sunlight no direct sunlight and it's actually fruiting so um you know i think that's my point we're we're pretty much on pace the figs are obviously bigger and better and every year they get, they just produce more and more. The winter has been kind to us and it's time I think to really enjoy all of the, the fruits of my labor, quite literally. Um, and even this plot, uh, this southern plot here where we have 60 trees, you might even be able to argue the trees in here are even slightly closer than the, the plot we just looked at. These trees have really never had an opportunity to survive the winter, just with very minimal winter protection. Uh, finally, I was able to protect them this year and we didn't even need it. <laughs> and now they have just taken off like uh, you would not believe. And 
I would say in here, in this plot, there's maybe six or so trees that won't really produce anything simply due to the hormones. Getting the hormones back into balance, it takes a little bit of time depending on the variety, depending on the tree. Uh, it could be, I may need another year with some of these. I may need an extra year on top of that, like Colonel Littman's Black Cross might need another year, kind of like Smith. But regardless, um, we're, we're on the right pace because now these trees are gonna be able to withstand the winter time much easier than before. I won't really have to protect these very much. And um, yeah, we're gonna enjoy the fruits this year. And like I said, it's, it's amazing that we just protect at least something of the trees. They build a base, the hormones change. And like I said, the majority of the trees in here are fruiting. Some of them are fruiting to insane degrees. Like this uh, Neruccello de Elba is covered in fruit. White Triana back there is covered in fruit. Pisoludo, I cannot wait to eat some Pisoludo figs again. Even some Villa de Bordeaux. I haven't eaten a Villa de Bordeaux fig in like four years. Uh, this is a hardy Chicago that's loaded. We have uh, Col Noir is pretty much loaded. Um, Pastelier from Rain Tree is like an eight foot shoot back there. And every single shoot that's come off of that main single stem, that main whip is like loaded with fruit. So um, yeah, I don't know. Some people might look at this and think, oh, that's magic. You know, there's, um, I almost want to say like there's something special about this year. Like there's something magical that I did and that figs are mysterious and unknown and they're, you know, the fruit of the gods or they were in the Bible or they were this or they were that. And it's like, once you really understand these fruits and, and how these trees work, uh, you know, it, it just, it's not magic, even though it might seem like it. And you can do the same thing too. All you have to do is really learn from what I've been saying here on this channel. I know a lot of you guys are very appreciative and uh, I'm sure you're all excited for me, but you ought to be excited for yourself because this, if it's not already you, maybe it's been you for years, um, it will come at some point. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Hit the like button. Please check out my blog, figboss.com. Look at all those pomegranate flowers, by the way. <laughs> all right. See you later.